My name is Gabby Joseph, and I am from the University of California, San Francisco. I will be presenting a recent publication in the Journal of Magnetic Resonance Imaging titled Predicting the Development of Osteoarthritis Over Eight Years Using Baseline Clinical Data and MR Imaging, a preliminary study using data from the Osteoarthritis Initiative. Osteoarthritis affects 9.3 million U.S. adults and leads to severe disability. There are various characteristics of osteoarthritis, including cartilage degeneration that starts from the early biochemical stages and follows by the late stage morphologic changes. The early biochemical stages involve features such as disorganization of the collagen network and changes in hydration, followed by later stages that include cartilage lesions and the advanced stages that include joint space narrowing. The stages of osteoarthritis can be detected using various imaging techniques. For example, MRI T2 mapping is sensitive to the disorganization of the collagen structure and dehydration. MRI morphologic sequences can detect cartilage thinning and lesions and X-ray-based KL grading can detect joint space narrowing. Imaging can also be used to assess the risk for osteoarthritis. For example, studies have shown that X-ray-based Kellgren-Lorentz grade has been associated with increased pain, malalignment has been associated with increased joint space narrowing, with MRI morphology, studies have shown that both cartilage and meniscal tears are associated with incident radiographic osteoarthritis. And MRI cartilage T2 has been shown associated with incident radiographic osteoarthritis. In addition to these imaging findings, demographics including increased age, being a female, having elevated BMI, and having previous injury are also associated with increased risk for osteoarthritis. The idea for our study is to build a multifactorial OA risk prediction model that involves both imaging and demographic factors to determine individualized risk. There have been previous osteoarthritis risk prediction models.
So the details for the variables included are listed here. For the x-ray variables, we included KL score and alignment angle. For the model with MRI worm scores, we included our worm scores, our cartilage defects, and meniscus worms. And for the T2, we included T2 values in each of the five compartments, as well as the mean. We distilled each of these three models using Stata's model building algorithm called All Possible Subsets Algorithm and measured the AIC. We then performed tenfold cross-validation to determine a discrimination index. And we chose a model with the lowest AIC and the highest discrimination index. So now for the results. Our base model included age, gender, and BMI, and these variables were in each of the three models. For model one, the most important parameters that came out from the models were 12-month previous injury and KL score. For model two, a defect in the lateral femur, a patella, and a meniscal tear were most important. And for model three, mean T2 in the medial femur and the medial tibia were most important. Now for the model performance. The base model had an AUC of 0.64, and model 1 with baseline and x-ray had an AUC of 0.71, which is significantly different from the base model. Then when we added our MRI morphology, we had an AUC of 0.75, and when we added our T2 values and MRI morphology, we did see a significant improvement from model 1 which just had KL scores. So for an application, what might this look like? Subjects could come in and fill out a questionnaire, fill out whether they have a worm's tear in the lateral femur or patella, a meniscal tear, and they could get a risk score. If we look at the effects of varying T2 values, this is an example of a low medial T2 value of 30.8, versus a high medial femur T2 value of 42.3. And what we can see is changing the risk changes, changing the T2 value changes the risk. So the subject with a low T2 value has very low risk and subject with a high T2 value has high risk. So MRI can further stratify the risk over a simpler model. So for the discussion, we developed a risk prediction model over eight years and adding worms and cartilage D2 significantly improved prediction over x-ray alone. For future recommendations, we may recommend two models, a standard clinical model with x-ray and worms if T2 is not available, and if T2 is available, then a research application model with T2 would be useful. I'd like to acknowledge our research group and NIH with our funding sources. Thank you so much.